All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. If uh, if you would, let's just do a quick uh, audio video slide check here. If you can see Ian and I, if you can uh, see the slide that uh, I've got up, if you can hear our voice, just type a, a Y in that question box there, if you would. And just let us know everything looks good. All right, perfect. All right, we'll get started in just a moment here. All right, sorry about the delay, guys. Just a little technical issue on this end. Uh, welcome, everyone, to this presentation here hosted by FFR Trading. Again, my name is John Madison. I'm the senior strategist here at FFR Trading. I'm going to be your host for this special presentation with Ian Cooper, uh, Revolutionizing the Future, Ian Cooper's Game-Changing AI Insights and Top 5 Stock Picks. And you'll want to stay till the end uh, for this one as Ian will be re uh, revealing his top five AI, AI stock picks, and you'll also qualify to receive a 90-day complimentary subscription to one of Ian's newsletters. I'm going to put up the uh, risk disclosure here. You guys should be seeing that. Obviously, trading is risky business, right? That's why we suggest that you put your trading in the hands of a proven winner like Ian Cooper. Uh, we think that's a much better idea than trying to do this yourself when we know upwards of 90 plus percent of traders uh, that fail trying to do this on your own. Um, just some uh, questions to consider as we go through here. You know, obviously, uh, everyone's here for a reason, right? You're looking for a way to generate monthly income, maybe, or try to build that retirement for yourself. Um, you know, earning a few percent in a mutual fund is not cutting it. If you've got, you know, a decade, you know, before you're getting ready to retire, 15 years out, uh, you need you need to do something different. Uh, maybe you're looking for a trusted source where you can learn to trade. Uh, and you'd like to earn some income while you're learning. Uh, maybe you don't have the time to do this yourself or the expertise, and you're looking for strategies that you can trust. Our goal today is to provide a solution for you to at least consider. All right, let's take a look at what we're going to be covering today. All right, so today we're going to take a look at who we are here at FFR Trading. What is our role here? I'll introduce you to Ian. We'll take a look at uh, Ian's educational course on the service, everything that comes with that. And then uh, Ian will come on. He's going to review his top five AI stock picks. And then we'll do a Q&A session uh, with Ian on, uh, on AI. So you guys be ready with your questions. And again, everybody that stays on for the entire uh, presentation here will uh, have the opportunity to pick up one of Ian's newsletters. Uh, gratis okay all right so let's talk about who we are here at ffr trading and what is our role here we are a boutique vetting firm right well, what does that mean uh it means you know how how is what we do different than you going on google and doing a google search well ffr trading's due diligence process is better than a simple Google search because it involves multiple steps to thoroughly evaluate a strategy developer's qualifications and the efficacy of their trading strategy. Uh, we have access to resources that you and Google don't. 
Uh, firstly, FFR training requires that the strategy developer is referred by a trusted third party and has at least 15 years of experience, uh, which helps to ensure that the developer is credible, they've got a proven track record in the industry. Uh, next, we attempt to work with developers who have been licensed by the various regulatory bodies, indicating that you know, they've met certain standards and requirements to operate in the financial markets. The developer must complete a comprehensive application and survey, you know, providing detailed information about their strategy, the trading rules, the performance. Um, next, we verify the effectiveness of the trading rules in the current markets, and we prefer strategies that are, you know, mechanical, quantifiable, rather than relying on solely on like subjective decision making. Uh, fifth. Uh, we look for traders again that have at least 15 years of actual trading experience and also a mentor's mentality. So we're looking for traders and developers who have a deep understanding of the markets and a willingness to share their knowledge. Right. Next, uh, back testing a requirement of five or more years. That just provides additional evidence of the strategy's performance over a variety of market conditions over time. Right. Then the traders provide us with their real brokerage account statements. They give us access to actual trading da data to further validate that strategy's efficacy. And finally, uh, we launch that strategy in a live market that helps to ensure that the strategy performs as expected in you know real world uh, setting uh, before FFR uh, trading commits to offering that service to our clients here. So all these steps just show our due diligence that we do here at FFR on your behalf is much more thorough and rigorous than a simple Google search, right? It helps, helps ensure that we're working with high quality developer, developers and trading strategies. All right, I think you get the point there and I think you think that's a pretty uh, thorough process as well. All right, let me uh, go ahead and bring in uh, Ian Cooper. Ian, um, let, me, uh, let me go ahead and unmute everybody here all right uh just go ahead and test your mic for us ian hey testing testing perfect all right so i wanted to talk to you a bit uh, first about your trading background you know how did you get started as a trader ian uh well initially i was doing uh public relations and marketing uh in the baltimore area uh and then kind of ventured into i was offered an opportunity to uh you know, join a group at uh, Agora Publishing, and uh, I've been doing that for about uh, 22, 23 years now uh, with uh, different financial uh, newsletters and, and groups and things such as that, and teaching people how to trade stocks and options with a bunch of different, uh, you know, technical and fundamental strategies. And it, and it seems, you know, going through your strategies and, and you know, interacting with you over the last uh, year or two, um, you have a keen focus on news. What, you know, why did you choose that focus on news events? Well, news drives pretty much every stock and option and ETF and market out there. You know, uh, you know, you look at the markets today, markets are pulling back substantially because there's, you know, because of financials, because of the uh, Federal Reserve, because of interest rates, the fear of recession, you name it. That's all news driven. Um, if you can find a hot piece of news that's going to last a while or just is going to be short lived, there's always a way to trade that. And one of the ways that I trade the news uh, is I use uh, anticipatory momentum, uh, news dissemination. Uh, you know, think of throwing a, uh, a stone in a pond and it, and it just uh, ripples out. The same thing happens with the news flow. And then eventually, what you're going to have is the death of news. Um, you know, when the news dies out, so do the stocks associated with that most times. So there's there's always an opportunity somewhere in there to to make uh, some some good money from those three uh, you know facets of, of news flow. So on that death of news you talk about that that may be that the stock has that news is played out and that stock may be overextended one way or the other, and that's where right. you find some opportunities. Right. It may have become excessively oversold or overbought. And we can tell when it become oversold or overbought because you know that the news flow uh, that sent that stock up uh, is starting to fade. And we can also use uh, uh, several technical indicators that let us know, you know, this thing's about to pivot in the other direction, either from oversold or overbought conditions. You know, your RSI, your MACD, 
Williams percentage range, Bollinger bands, you know, things such as that. All right, and then uh, what uh, what keeps you busy these days? Uh, my son just turned 17. <laughs> uh, I'm still trying to make sense of, of the markets these days with, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve making a nice little mess of, uh, of things. Uh, and just, uh, you know, I have a, um, uh, a seven week old uh, puppy here that's uh, that's um, keeping me busy these days too. <laughs> well, I'll put you on the spot a little bit because obviously we've seen the, the markets tank over the last few days here. Uh, what's going on? What's behind this? Uh, well, the pullback today was, is, is strictly from the fear of contagion because there was some uh, fallout at one of the banks. Uh, I forget the bank name uh, all of a sudden, but it, it's that. It's also the fear of, um, you know, higher interest rates uh, from the Federal Reserve. You know, the Federal Reserve told us that inflation was transitory, but, you know, anyone with, you know, common sense knew it wasn't transitory. They knew there was a real longstanding issue there. And now one of the only ways that we're going to get out of um, all this chaos with, with raising rates and fighting inflation is to is for the Federal Reserve to kind of push us into a recession. That's really the only way we're going to get out of this uh, at the moment. So there's, there's a tremendous amount of fear. And then, of course, you have your geopolitical tensions with Russia, China, you name it these days that and uh you know the markets hate uncertainty so that's also part of the reason why markets have been coming down so aggressively all right some uh some great insight uh there let's let's uh, shift a little bit and talk about um one of the trade services that you provide now you've got three that you offer to our clients here at ffr trading you've got the news event trader program uh, you also have what's called trigger point options uh, but the one I think probably dovetails nicely with the talk today is the tech stock options. Um, right. Tell us a little bit about your uh, tech stocks option program. Uh, tech stocks, we strictly go after, you know, uh, technology based uh, stocks and news and and um, ETFs and, and options as well. Uh, you know, we're going after the hottest trends that are out there, such as artificial intelligence, which has been a a real game changer uh, for the markets lately. We're finding a lot, significant amount of opportunity with it, with AI stocks. Uh, we're also finding good opportunity with oversold and, and overbought uh, other tech stocks outside of the AI realm as well. Uh, so we're, we're, we're using, um, we're also using, you know, technical pivot points here too, to let us know exactly when to get in and out. And I'm gonna show that to you guys in just a, a moment with some of these AI stocks that we found. You know, uh, you were obviously you were around back when the the uh, the dot com bubble, right? When yeah. when the internet kind of was born, at least for for uh, for the retail trader and and uh, the retail uh, crowd, anyway. Um, how do you compare? Or do you see similarities between what's happening in AI? Do you think AI will be kind of the game changer, like like uh, you know the internet was? Uh, how do you see or, or how do you kind of uh compare and contrast those two those two times well the, the internet boom became too frothy um you know those stocks were just sent to you know unbelievable valuations i don't see that happening as quickly uh with ai stocks for example you know your nvidia your apple your amds i don't see that happening uh, as aggressively again you know the uh the artificial intelligence story is, is here to stay it's, it's a significant game changer for just about every industry out there. You know, you know industrials, healthcare, uh, law enforcement, you name it. It's really going to impact just about every industry uh, out there. So it has more staying power. And I don't think uh, related stocks are going to become as frothy as, um, you know, uh, your internet stocks have, uh, especially back in 2000. Yeah, that was a, a pretty crazy time. I don't know if we'll ever see something like that, at least in our lifetime again. That was a huge game changer. Um, yeah. So your tech stock option programs, uh, tell us, you know, what is the strategy behind that? And, you know, some of the academics behind that program for our, our uh, viewers here. Oh, well, tech stocks, again, we're, we're simply going after technology-based stocks. You know, we're, we're touching on uh, pretty much um, every tech stock out there. And if it's excessively oversold or overbought, we're going to go after it uh, with, with a call or a put option. Uh, or if we see a new emerging story popping up, 
um, we're going to try to attack that as well. So that there's always an opportunity with technology, which, uh, you know, there's there's always brand new innovation with technology. So there's always something to go after that's that's fun, that's interesting, and that's going to make us some quick money. And what kind of uh, trading capital would you recommend somebody if they were starting this program? What would they need to have? Oh, really, you know, any at this point, we try to, to go after lower priced options so that we don't uh, exclude anyone that, you know, you know, I would, I would say up to, you know, uh, five grand to start out. Uh, it, really, it really depends on your risk tolerance. You know, how much can you afford to lose per trade is how much you should put in a trade. And that's not to say that, you know, you know, we're going to have a slew of losers right out of the gate or at any point. Uh, but we, we always tell people, you know, only risk as much as you can afford to lose on a single trade. And kind of talking about uh, performance, let's take a look at the numbers. Now, this is like seven years worth of data now on your tech stock uh, program. So this has been running for a while. Uh, this yeah. is based on a, a $10,000 account size, uh, allocating approximately $1,000 per trade. And again, this starts uh, July of 2015 all the way through January uh, 6th of 2023 here. These numbers are non-compounded now. So uh, if you see that that $10,000 here, um, our starting capital here, turns into a net profit of $236,181 over that seven, roughly seven year period. That's a return on capital of over 2,000%, about 2,300%. Uh, percent over that time. And that's averaging about 314% per year. Um, now, obviously we were in one of the, you know, a pretty raging bull market for, for many years uh, since the crash of 2008. But is this, is this because money has just been pouring into tech stocks ever since? Or, you know, how do you explain these numbers, uh, you know, and kind of give us some rationale for this? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, over the last few years, you know, we're, we're just always finding, you know, opportunities on the short side and the long side of, of tech stocks, uh, you know, and the strategy is pretty easy to uh, uncover these. So, you know, we've done, uh, you know, pretty well over these last few years. Yeah, I would say, I mean, it looks like you're winning 71% of the trades, which is, which is a, a nice high win rate. What I really yeah, love, I was just going to point out, oh, go ahead. I want that closer to 100%. 100% right. But here's here's what I love about this. Look at the average winner is over $1,200 with the average loss just $567. So you're getting the best of both worlds here. You get a high win rate, but you're also your average winner is about twice the size of the average loser. I mean, that's uh, that's dynamite. Yeah. Most traders would die for uh, for a, uh, uh, you know, a win loss and a and, uh, average win size versus average loser uh, like this. So that's giving, if you look at the monthly average, you're averaging on a $10,000 account size. Now this is $2,600 a month, right? So if you think about somebody who's looking to maybe generate some income, uh, monthly income, maybe to supplement their their uh, current income, or, you know, if you're trying to build a retirement, you know, these are, these are numbers you're not going to do, you know, in a mutual fund, uh, you know, earning, you know, eight to 10% before fees and everything else in a mutual fund, right? We talk about it isn't going to cut it, especially if you're, if you're trying to catch up on retirement. Um, you know, a program like this could really, really help somebody achieve their uh, financial goals. What, what are your thoughts, Ian? Like, what do you see, you know, because you've helped a lot of people over the years, you know, you've helped them achieve that financial independence. Um, how, just kind of tell us a little bit about how this program fits into somebody's portfolio in that way you know i think it fits in very nicely because you know one of the things that we're doing to protect um to protect everyone is you know we're not going after small cap tech stocks you know we're going after well-known mid cap to large cap and mega cap stocks that have plenty of volatility and can be you know gotten into and out of uh relatively quickly at times uh depending on what um what the pattern is telling us uh so i think i think it fits in uh it should fit in very nicely uh just because you know we're not we're not you know we're not playing any games here we're not we're not going after these uh micro caps or or mega small cap stocks that you know you're playing guessing games with you know we're uh, we're respectful of people's money their time and their portfolios 
All right, and and then uh, let's see. I think that's everything I wanted to cover uh, here. Anything else you want to point out about these these numbers or tech stock program uh, in general? Uh, we're we're just trying to get the numbers, you know, even better. You know, I'm I'm okay with the 71 win rate, but you know, I'd like to get that uh, significantly higher. You know, we're always working to 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 improve. And I'm sure nobody would complain if uh, if their win percentage goes up, uh, especially if the uh, your average win size and versus your average loser stay the same there. That would be phenomenal. Um, now here's a, now this is an alert from uh, what's called your trigger point, one of your uh, your other programs. Um, and I just wanted to kind of go over so people get an idea of uh, when you send out a trade alert. You know, there's a lot of information in this. Um, this one happens to be a, a, a buy to open on Qualcomm. It's the uh, 125 calls at the market, and then you give uh, you know kind of a nice little uh, rationale as to why you're getting into that trade, what you're looking for. Um, talk about these these trade alerts and all the information that's that's in here. Well, we always try to detail uh, everything that we want to do with this trade. Uh, the one thing that this one it does not have is the the um, the stop loss information. Typically, with uh, all of our trades, we like to have a stop loss of between, let's say, 30 and 35 percent. Uh, or if a stop or an option starts to go against us, we'll automatically uh, send out another alert saying, "Hey, you know, this one uh, didn't work out as as we would have liked. Let's get out of it here." Um, with this one, we you know we always detail up front exactly what the trading opportunity is. Um, you know, we'll say at market or we'll say buy up to a specific price and then we'll detail exactly uh, why we like a particular opportunity, uh, both um, fundamentally and uh, technically most times. Uh, with this particular trade in Qualcomm, you know, the, the stock, um, it, you know, it's gotten beat up, beaten up over the last two days just because of the market pullback. But this one is, uh, this one in particular uh, is excessively uh, oversold at the tail end of the chart. It's it's below its 250-day moving averages, but as we'll discuss with the uh, AI names, uh, this one has become technically oversold uh, based on RSI, MACD, and Williams percentage range. And typically, when those indicators and other indicators that we include uh, align in oversold or overbought territory, you'll see a, a pivot not long after. But you know, right now, given the uh, circumstances in the market and all the chaos you know sometimes that's uh it can work against you temporarily but you know you the the, the opportunity is still there well i guess that's one of the nice things about options too is you get a little more time um you know uh for this trade to work out in your favor right all right and the, uh here's some of the other trades you see these are trades that have been exited here um and i noticed that I see some the effect most of these you're exiting half the position at some point. Tell us about your strat your exit strategy for these. Oh, well, we kind of do that on purpose after we've seen a uh, uh, a trade move up uh, very nicely, uh, you know we'll exit half and then let the other half run a bit more. All we're trying to do is secure some wins along the way. Um, you know, you know, no one ever complained about taking some money off the table. Um, and then we'll let the second half just run a bit more just to, uh, you know, and we'll do that if we begin to see that the underlying stock is uh, beginning to show signs of reversing in the wrong direction. Uh, but we want to give part of the trade even more time to work out. So it, it's just a protection protection strategy that I, that I like to use. And and the uh, the current volatility of the markets, the, the volatility the way it is, uh, is this does that also play into that? You know, taking oh, some absolutely. profit. Okay. A absolutely. You know, like uh, you know, today for example, I believe the uh, the Dow started off in the green, and now we're down. You know, the Dow is down about uh, another three four hundred points, uh, just because of the uh, the financial contagion fears and the interest rate hikes and the potential for recession and chaos but you know there's there's always a way to 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 trade the markets absolutely as you've uh, definitely proven over the years all right i'm going to get uh, ready uh, folks we're going to switch over to ian ian's going to pull up his charts and he's going to go through his top five ai stock picks for you
Um, it's got a great lineup here. And uh, so I'm going to get ready to switch over to you, Ian. Sure. Uh, give me just a moment here. You should get a pop up on your end. And we'll switch things right over to you. All right, let me just pull this up. All right, perfect. I do see your slide presentation there. There we go. There yep. we go. Can everyone uh, see that okay? Looks good. All right, good, good, good. All right, again, this is uh, uh, this is me. Um, and a little brief background, but um, you know, let's get let's kind of get into these picks and stuff here. Uh, so the artificial intelligence story is really getting red hot here. It's been one of the hottest stories. I'm sure you heard about the Chat GPT um, and all of the other technology that's been uh, coming out regarding that. Every business out there is really starting to um, really jump onto the AI story. So it's going to be big. Uh, and you can see here one of the uh, firm's Grandview Research, you know, believes that the AI boom could be uh, worth about 1.8 trillion over the next several years. It could significantly impact, um, you know, a economic boost of, of 14 trillion dollars by 2035 as well. You know, Morgan Stanley says AI is creating a, a six trillion dollar opportunity for technology. Bank of America says we're on the brink of another iPhone moment with a potential uh, $15 trillion impact. Kathy Wood says AI could increase productivity of workers, leading to economic output of $200 trillion. So there's a significant amount of money at play here. And we're talking about a, an AI boom that could really impact just about every single industry out there. You know, education is, is likely to be changed even more. Um, every single sort of technology. Uh, healthcare, uh, it could even help uh, surgeons in the uh, operating room. Anything that you can think of could be substantially impacted uh, by artificial intelligence. So it's a long-term growth story here that could be worth you know trillions and trillions of dollars. Uh, one of the one of my favorite trades is uh, C3 uh, AI, which you can see has gone ballistic, especially since the start of the year just on the AI boom story. Now, as, as I was telling you, uh, we can get in and out of these same stocks like AI uh, over and over again uh, on the long side and the short side, uh, simply by watching uh, the technical setups here. For example, we want to look at um, RSI. Uh, we can look at full stochastics or MACD. Uh, we can look at Williams percentage range. Now you can notice on this two-year chart of AI, uh, every time RSI gets two or above its 70 line, it's considered uh, uh, over oversold at that point. And then with full stochastics, when full stochastics jumps above 80, again, we have an oversold opportunity. When Williams percentage range gets above its 20 line, confirming the other two, we can make the argument that, hey, this stock has you know made its run Let's go ahead and play the short side. And then not long after, the stock, as you can see on the screen right here, will pivot in the other direction. Or we can turn things around. And now we want to look at RSI at or below its 30 line. We want to look at full stochastics or MACD below its 20 line. We want to look at Williams percentage range below its 80 line. When that happens, we have an oversold uh, situation. We have confirmation from you know multiple uh, technical indicators, and then again, maybe 80% of the time you'll see a pivot in the other direction, and you can see that multiple times happening here over the last two years. Um, now, most recently, AI uh, managed to fail at uh, double top resistance at around 30 a share. Um, and this that could come down even more here just because that doesn't indicate weakness in the industry it just because the overall market is kind of you know jumping off the cliff here uh, another one to look at oh well here's some of the uh, technical indicators to watch for strength and weakness full stochastics williams rsi we can even use money flow or macd <coughs> and of course your bollinger bands 
set at two standard deviations above and below your 20 day moving average. Uh, another stock to look at is, of course, NVIDIA. NVIDIA is probably the biggest leader in the AI boom. This is also one of my favorite stocks to jump in and out of. Uh, you can see again with RSI, full stochastics, Williams percentage range. Each time each of those indicators align and oversold or overbought territory, NVIDIA will either pivot in the other direction and hand us a win on puts or calls. Uh, and we can literally jump in and, out, in and out of this trade several times just using one stock to, to make our money. Uh, of course, there's Microsoft as well. Microsoft, the same technical setups on RSI, full stochastics and Williams percentage range. Uh, this is a good, good name with a lot of volume, very liquid name. Uh, so it's very easy to get in and out of all of these trades. Again, we're not going after your your smaller cap or your micro cap AI names because we want to we want to be a bit you know safer with our approach. Um, there's AMD, which is a which is a hot opportunity as well. Again, RSI, full stochastics, Williams percentage range, telling us exactly when to go long and when to go short again and again and again throughout the year. So what we have is a nice little basket of these stocks. And that's all we really need at, at times for the AI industry, at least, uh, to make our money again and again and again. And finally, we all have, also have uh, PLTR, <coughs> Palantir Technologies. Uh, this one, again, uh, is, a, is a solid opportunity um, that we can make our money from. These guys also have some nice uh, contracts with the uh, uh, U.S. Department of Defense as well, which is a big reason we like uh, PLTR here. Uh, again, technically with RSI, full stochastics and Williams percentage range, we can tell again between you know 80 to 85 percent of the time exactly when this stock is going to pivot in the other direction, allowing us to either use a put or a call option uh, along the way. And um, John, that's all I have at the moment. Or right, Ian, could you go over the uh, the uh, the ticker symbols on the on the five? Just yeah, so people can uh, write those have, down. Uh, PLTR, which is Palantir Technologies. Uh, we have AMD, which is Advanced Micro Devices, which is a hot name in the industry. They're also a hot name in the gaming industry as well. Uh, of course, we have Microsoft MSFT. And NVIDIA, NVDA. Um, yeah, they got they got butchered yesterday. They're they're down again today. Might be a good uh, opportunity to, to buy a put option on this one. Uh, and then of course we have C3 AI, uh, which is currently failing after testing a thirty dollar resistance. This one could come down uh, a bit more with the broader market. Uh, near term, longer term, I you know I, I like this opportunity a lot. You can probably buy a uh, uh, you know a leap on AI and just let that run for uh, quite some time. You know a leap you can hold for uh, two to three years without a lot of you know time decay issues until you start to near uh, the expiration date. And so Ian, these these setups, uh, you know, using the indicators. <laughs> These are things that you can use over and over again with these stocks, right? This is not just like one particular trade set up. Uh, this is right. something that might set up multiple times in both directions, right? We could use calls right. and puts. Talk about that a little yeah. bit. Like what, how would one do that? Uh, well, we can, we can help indicate that. Uh, we're always watching when it comes to uh, technology, you know, with artificial intelligence or any other sort of technology, we'll find a basket of stocks to trade. Uh, and then we'll watch, you know, five, ten different uh, trades at a given time, and then have indicators when it begins begins to become technically oversold or overbought um, over and over and over again on the same stock. So we can literally jump in and out uh, of these same opportunities multiple times in a single year. Um, I mean, it's it's a good amount of work to 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 spot exactly where these pivots are going to happen, but 
you know, we, we screen for it daily. And uh, guys, go ahead and uh, we'll have the Q&A. Uh, Ian's giving you his top five, PLTR, AMD, uh, Microsoft, MSFT, N NVIDIA, NVDA. Again, these are not these are not penny stocks, right? These are big name companies. Uh, what was the last one? C3 AI. What's the ticker on that one, Ian? Uh, a AI. AI. Okay, that's that's perfect. Um, so guys, go ahead and uh, post your questions, and uh, we'll have Ian uh, field these as they come through here. Uh, let's see. So, so Ian, somebody was just asking about, you know, can you can can you explain how your tech stock program, you know, would would some of these trade setups that you're showing here, would those show up in the tech stock program? Yes, absolutely. You know, we always try to go after names that are are, are very very liquid, uh, and and very well known uh, all the time. You know, we don't want to go after any no names that are going to sit there and and just go nowhere. And you are trading straight puts and calls, right? We're not dealing with spreads or anything else uh, here. Is that correct? No, we like to keep it the, the simpler the better uh, to make to make money. Okay, and uh, like you said, this can these setups can be used whether we're looking to uh, be a buyer on an oversold condition or um, uh, a buying a put on an overbought condition. Correct. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So someone's asking, uh, what's uh, what size account do I need to get started with you? Um, I'll just say uh, on our end, typically we recommend a minimum of ten thousand, uh, and I think that's uh, Marco's asking. Uh, you had talked about this a little earlier, uh, Ian. But what are your thoughts as far as what kind of capital should somebody put towards a program like this? Uh, I would, yeah, no, I would say anywhere between you know five and ten thousand dollars. Um, just, just to start out, um, you know, I've seen some people start out with, with only a thousand dollars and then build up from there as well. You know, my, my whole thing is, you know, do not risk more than you can afford to lose on any given trade. You know, that's a great way to wipe out your entire account and maybe your, your entire portfolio along the way, which none of us really want to do. And when you send out a, a trade alert, you also sent out, you were talking about, you're not just sending out a trade alert, you know, when to buy, but you're also indicating if there's an update that needs, you know, some kind of trade management in the middle of a trade or, right. you know, when to exit that trade, correct? Right. So if something goes against us, um, you know, we want to just, you know, let you know immediately. And we'll typically also include a, a, a stop loss strategy in these alerts as well. Mm -hmm. And Dave asks a nice question here. He says, it seems that other traders are being cautious and sitting on the sidelines. Why do you suppose your systems are different? Well, we're not, you know, there's there's always an opportunity in the market to make money, you know, and if and if we need to switch our strategy to play the short side of technology stocks more significantly, then we'll do so. Um, you know, so, you know, there's always going to be that opportunity. You just have to be able to spot exactly where something is going to pivot in the other direction. You know, like today, for example, I was looking at a, a bunch of stocks that are that have become excessively overbought and ready to come down. Uh, some of which we may actually uh, issue a trade alert on uh, early next week. Um, so, you know, whatever the market's doing, you know, there, there's going to be an opportunity. Right, and William, uh, William asks, uh, and this might be one I, I field for you, uh, what different levels of service do you provide? Uh, do you provide the buys and sells? So just to kind of tell you on our end, William, uh, here at FFR, uh, you'll get uh, Ian's trade alerts. So that's not only the entries, but the exits, any updates. Um, but you also have access to Ian. So in all of our programs, you actually have access to the trader. So you, and Ian, maybe talk about that a little bit. You. You deal with your uh, your uh, your students and your clients, you know, probably on a daily basis, uh, you know, with questions that they have about maybe a trade setup or your strategy. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. If, if there's any a comment or a question or anything, you know, I respond immediately. And uh, as far as different levels of service, uh, we do offer also the educational material that comes with the program. So if you want to 
you know, learn how Ian trades uh, options on stocks or any of the other traders that we offer, they all provide uh, their uh, education that comes with that. So if it's something that you do want to learn, um, you can do that as, as, as well. Uh, it's not just a, a signal service uh, per se. Um, and then uh, John asks, can this be auto traded? Again, this is probably another one for, for me. Um, yes. So if time is a consideration for you or you just rather have, you know, uh, a third party um, registered licensed broker, uh, these these uh, firms that the traders work with have been you know, uh, trading these strategies for many years, executing the trades on behalf of uh, their clients. So that is an option uh, if you want to have the broker, what we call broker assisted trading uh, for sure. Uh, let's see, how long do your, uh, your trades typically stay open? Uh, Marco wants to know. Uh, it can really range from, you know, a couple of days to a couple of weeks at most. Uh, we've had some that we've we've um, maybe held on for too long, just to be uh, completely honest with you, um, hoping that they would come back as well. But you know, on average, a couple of days to a couple of weeks we, at the most. And uh, let's see, uh, Saul wants to know what would be a realistic uh, realistic expectation for the next year. I don't know if he's talking about 2023 as this is the next year or. 2024. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, right now, it, you know, it's tough to tell. You know, we'd like to maintain our current win rate and, and make it even higher to be, again, be completely honest with you. Uh, you know, it, it, it just depends on a lot of different things that are happening in the world right now. You know, the world could end tomorrow. <laughs> no, one, no one knows, but you know, we're going to do our very best to, to spot as many opportunities as we possibly can on uh, whether it be an oversold or overbought opportunity, you know, we're just going to take full advantage of, uh, of what we find. Uh, cause with every single stock out there, there, there is a way to trade it to make money. And, uh, with, with the, uh, tech stock option program, how many trades per month on average, would you say, uh, you're sending out there? Uh, we'd like to issue, uh, at least, uh, we try to issue at least two to three trades a week. Depending on what depending on what we find out there, uh, if markets become a bit too volatile and swinging in both directions, as we saw this last week, we may sometimes just stay on the sidelines, just to you know wait and see which direction the the Nasdaq or the Dow or the S and P 500 is going to move um, uh, in immediate term, just just to be safe. So uh, Steve asked a good question here. Uh, he wants to know, do you hold your trades through earnings um, or look to take them off because you expect too much volatility? Yeah, and typically we don't like to trade earnings and I'll always be uh, very aware if, uh, if we're trading too close to an earnings date because like you said, there is a good deal of volatility when it comes to, uh, to that. You, know, you can strip out your, your premium with that at, at times and we don't want to you know, be exposed to that in any way. All right, and let's see, looks like Dave's got a question. Uh, do you anticipate news and attempt to trade ahead of it or do you prefer to react to it? Uh, a lot of times we try to uh, do a little bit of both. We try to anticipate news. So if there's like a, you know, with Tesla, for example, they have their, uh, their uh, investor, they had their investor day. And what you can typically do is, um, in anticipation of positive news from that, you can trade ahead of the event. Uh, other times you can actually trade news dissemination. You know, you throw a, throw a stone in a pond and it ripples out. The same thing can happen with the news as well. You just have to be able to spot, um, you know, news that can, that has a long lasting uh, uh, effect. You know, an example of that, for example, is the coronavirus with, uh, you know, vaccine stocks, for example, uh, that lasted a while. That rippled out for quite some time, and sent out, you know, Pfizer, Moderna, BioNTech, things such as that, uh, sky high, um, just based on that single news event rippling out. 
Uh, let's see, uh, William asks, are your cell signals technical driven or P&L driven to take a portion of the profits? Uh, you know, fairly, I would say a little bit of both. Uh, to be very, to be, uh, to be upfront with you, we're, uh, I don't really have a specific answer for that one, but, you know, we're always looking, if we, if there's a gain on the table, we're going to take part or all of it, depending on what's happening to uh, it fundamentally and technically. All right. And uh, LB wants to uh, take a look at that C3 chart again. Uh, I said yeah. it was in a big, a big downtrend. So all those oversold indicators would probably not work out. How do you filter those buy signals um, in a situation like that? Uh, I, I'll just pull up the chart and, uh, and watch it uh, actively move and just wait for the opportunity to present itself. So is there a, uh, uh, you know, so let's say your indicators are all indicating an oversold condition. Is there also a pattern that you're looking for on the chart? Maybe like a candlestick pat pattern or something to confirm what you're seeing in the indicators? Yeah, there's a couple things that we do. If it becomes uh, excessively oversold, we'll often look for a, um, what's known as a doji cross, which can be an uh, indicate uh, indecision among the bulls and the bears, you know, doji cross at the, at the top of trend or bottom of trend can be a great indicator of potential reversal. Uh, but you, what you also want to wait for is confirmation of a potential reversal. You know, as we saw in the markets these last few days, uh, we, um, you know, markets pulled back substantially and then ran up a bit and people, you know, ran into that without waiting for confirmation to make sure hey, this isn't some kind of, you know, bull trap here. And they got trapped and, you know, they wound up losing a good deal of money when the market, markets pulled back again today. So, you know, confirmation is always an essential part of the trade. You know, is this pivot for real? Uh, should I buy it now or should I just wait a little longer just to make sure uh, that, uh, in fact, that the, the, um, the reversal is, is, um, is possible here? All right. Yeah, that's a, that's excellent information because, uh, you know, a lot of people just assume they see an oversold condition and they just jump in and there's other things that you're looking at uh, in order to corroborate what you're seeing in the indicators. Um, all right. My, uh, my last question, uh, Ian, before we begin to wrap up here is, you know, why, why should someone, you know, consider subscribing to one of your services? And we talked about tech stocks, but you've got um, uh, trigger point options and you also have your news event trader options program why might somebody consider subscribing to one of those programs you know we have a high win rate and we're actively trading we're actively putting out alerts and we're you know we're always there for uh, for uh, all traders and investors uh, if there's ever a question a comment and we always try to uh, to educate along the way as well you know i'm not going to sit here and say you know we're we're uh you know, we're obscenely perfect all the time, uh, but we do a good job of, uh, of, of, um, of, of spotting opportunities actively. Um, yeah, before I, I uh, uh, go over everything that's gonna come with this, this uh, programs here, uh, Ron wants to know, uh, can you please uh, describe full stochastics indicator? Oh, well, using full stochastics as we would use uh, RSI or Williams percentage range, we're simply looking for uh, overextensions in uh, um, in oversold or overbought territory along the way. So we're using it as another confirming tool of momentum. Uh, it kind of lets us know what the, what the mindset of the uh, uh, your average trader and the psychology of the traders is at that particular time. Yeah, and that's so, just a... That's just a stochastic, like uh, out of the box settings type of thing, or yeah, yeah. There's fast okay. stochastics, slow stochastics, full stochastics. You know, we're using the the full or the fast just as another uh, complementary indicator to to uh, confirm what other indicators are are telling us as well. All right, fantastic. All right, guys. So this is what Ian's put together uh, for you guys. You see, you know, the kind of results that Ian's getting. You see the kind of stocks that he's trading with some of these programs. Uh, for new subscribers, 
and it says that qualify. What that means is you do have to call us because we do have to make sure this is a good fit for you. Right? We're not going to put you in a program that you're undercapitalized or whatever the case might be. So we want to make sure this is a good fit for you. Uh, Ian is willing to offer 50% off his standard license fees. All right. If you purchase one of his programs, we're going to do a BOGO. We're going to do a buy one, get one free here. Um, you're going to be able to pick another one of Ian's strategies. So his Netta. Uh, Ian, talk about maybe what, what would be uh, if somebody was going to do two programs together. Um, what, which two programs uh, you think pair well together that you offer? Oh, well, personally, I, you know, I, I kind of, I like them all, but, uh, you know, I would use, uh, you know, Netta and, um, and Tech or um, uh, another good couple, it would be, uh, you know, Tech and, uh, and Trigger as well. But I would definitely put the, the, you know, Tech stocks in there as well. So, guys, so if you do, uh, if you do give us a call. Right, uh, and you want to purchase the the tech options, maybe Netta. You get uh, six months of one of his other strategies, complimentary. Um, also, everybody that stayed, uh, thank you for 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 joining us today. The the bonus for everyone that stayed would be a complimentary subscription to one of uh, Ian's newsletters for 90 days. And Ian, you've got several newsletters. Uh, which newsletter would you recommend for folks? Especially, it looks like these folks are kind of the uh, uh, like the AI, like the tech stock uh, type of thing. Uh, yeah, we do, we do have one of the top ones is is the uh, the, the trigger point uh, newsletter, uh, which is very complimentary for uh, the tech stocks um, system. All right, so guys, if you if you call in uh, and you want that additional bonus for staying the entire webinar here. Uh, maybe you're going to ask for the trigger point newsletter. Uh, that's going to be free for 90 days for you. All right, this is this is good only until the end of day on Monday. So time is of the essence. What you need to do, guys, just give us a call. You can call the 800-883-0524 number. Again, we do have to make sure this is a, a good fit for you. So we're going to ask you some questions. Um, and then uh, we can put you in one of Ian's programs if it's appropriate. You get to pick. Another strategy for free for six months, uh, like Ian, uh, he likes the uh, tech stocks along with the uh, Netta. Uh, t tell us a little bit about Netta. That's your news event trader program. Uh, tell us a little bit about that one. Uh, Netta trades uh, anticipatory momentum, uh, dissemination of news, and death of news. Uh, we also couple that with uh, the technical indicators uh, that let us know when to get in and out of trades, again, oversold, overbought territory. Uh, with that one, we kind of like to trade to take full advantage of uh, uh, of the of herd mentality, the psychology of the trader. Because uh, what happens is a lot of times that uh, you know traders will follow uh, the masses, and typically that turns out the wrong way. Uh, and we like to trade, uh, you know, opposite to that, almost like a contrarian strategy. Uh, and we can do all that just by watching the news and. Uh, and trading the, the different uh, facets of news. Uh, well, LB just uh, LB must be one of your current subscribers. He just uh, chimed in and said he'll say uh, Ian is the real deal. Uh, I used uh, in said I've used in previous recommendations with good success. So uh, kudos uh, LB for you recognizing you know Ian's. Uh, uh, you know the effectiveness of his his uh, his uh, option calls here, um, and uh, list of newsletters. William, you can uh, give us a call here. The 800-883-0524 uh, analyst will let you know which uh, which newsletters are available, and you can kind of pick. Like I said, Ian likes the trigger point uh, for you guys if you're tech savvy, um, or even if you're not, if you like that, uh, if you like tech stocks, if you're into the AI, that's probably a good one for you. Uh, but give that that number a call, and you get to pick two strategies. Uh, he's cutting the price of the first strategy in half. So if you want tech stocks, you can get it for 50% off, and then they're going to throw in a another program uh, six months for free, All right? And then also request your newsletter. But you got to call. You got to call the 800-883-0524 number, 
And then uh, if you're outside the US, you can use the 832-404-2420 because I know we have uh, people watching around the world. Uh, support at FFRtrading.com. That'll work as well. Uh, Ian, any last uh, comments before uh, we wrap it up here? And guys, if you have any last questions. Uh, just be, you know, safe and calm in the markets. You know, even even though the markets are a bit uh, uh, volatile and nuts right now, just, you know, stay calm and know that there's always uh, an opportunity to make money uh, on the short or long side right now. Um, a question came in. That's a good question. Uh, a lot of people like to know if, if they're already trading options. Uh, do you look for, what type of options do you look for when you buy them? Are you looking for something that's in the money, out of the money, at the money, somewhere? in between there yeah uh, you know whatever whatever looks the safest we'll look at the greeks uh and we'll see what's going to work out the best we'd like to uh most of the times put out you know inexpensive uh options that are you know in the money or at least at the money uh most times but you know we'll, we'll definitely entertain um other opportunities if they look uh you know intriguing all right fantastic and and guys, like we talked about earlier, you know, you're here for a reason. So, you know, maybe there's something in your financial world that isn't quite going according to plan. You know, with the numbers that you've looked at today, uh, we talked about tech stocks and we showed you some of the numbers there. You can call in and get the look over in detail, the performance of the other programs. Uh, would this help? You know, would getting a return of, you know, better than 50 percent, you know, upwards of 100 percent return, would that help, you know, help you achieve your financial goals? Um, you know, you won't know unless you try. So we're just saying, you know, take that step, figure out, we'll work with you, see if this is something that's a good fit for you. If it's not, we'll tell you it's not a good fit for you. Um, but if it is, you can go through these programs. They'll show you in detail uh, how the programs work. You have access to the traders, all the educational material that comes with these programs um, and all the performance numbers, of course, they're going to give you as well. As much as possible, we do try to get uh, brokerage statements from our clients so you can see how they're doing in these programs. All right, but you gotta give us a call. Uh, all we're asking is, is give us a call, let us see if this is something that's a good fit for you. Um, and, uh, and then you can make an informed decision if it's something that you think might benefit you. All right, guys, uh, we appreciate Ian uh, Cooper being here. Ian, it was great. Uh, some great stock picks. We'll continue to, to monitor those. And again, guys, these are, these are stocks you can trade uh, over and over again uh, with the setups that uh, uh, in the indicators that Ian is, is using here. Or you can just sign up for one of his, his services, let him call the shots and explain why, and you'll learn as you go. All right, hope that's helpful, guy. Again, I'll put up the, uh, the number here. It's the 800-883-0524 for FFR Trading or support at FFRtrading.com. All right, guys, again, if you have further questions, just give us a call. We'll answer those uh, offline here. All right, Ian, again, thanks for coming. Uh, guys, we wish you well. Have a great rest of your trading week. We'll see you all back in the next presentation.